Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to this panel discussion. We have indeed three excellent panelists so far. We're expecting two further panelists to join. Let me introduce you to the panelists so far who are with us. Uh, first of all, I'm, we, we're kind of covering a whole span of east to west. So first of all, I move to the east and to Japan. We have, um, which is um, located in Tokyo, Japan, Ms. Yuki Ito is the CEO of Zest. And Yuki um, has been really involved in the whole IT industry for many, many years. We'll hear about that later. And she's been building software in Japan. And she's excited, really, to bring her latest product to the States at the moment. It's been a little bit uh, hindered by COVID. Um, and she's had different stages of working as an entrepreneur. So Yuki Ito from Japan. Uh, still staying in the East, we have Mr. We have Mr. Yosis Kusien, uh, who's the founder and CEO of Winox Technology in Taiwan. He is actually uh, very well known for some first class and very innovative inventions. Um, he's focused on the internet of medical things and developing a platform for a lifetime of family health uh, stewardship. And Winots makes devices, and one device which is particularly relevant to the current situation is an automatic blood sampling device, as well as a disease risk assessment device called EGI, which is still being developed. Um, and we're now moving over to the far west of the world. Um, Ms. Angela, Dr. Angela Huang, she's the president and founder of Temp Bioscience, and they focus, Temp Bioscience focuses on adult stem cell, cell technology, and she has developed, um, she's been involved in a spin-off from Temp Bioscience called Presto Therapeutics, which really focuses on developing model uh, or novel medicines based on the human IPSC technologies. She's also um, a high-level inventor, and been included on numerous patents and published in journals such as Nature. Nature. So, ladies and gentlemen, so far we have three panelists, and we'll start, we'll kick off um, maybe staying moving over to the uh, east, starting in Japan with Yuki Ito. Um, Yuki, uh, well, maybe first of all, we're really focusing um, not only on the Corona pandemic here and how companies are dealing with the challenges, but also the future. And many entrepreneurs, and you're included as entrepreneurs, all of you, many companies and entrepreneurs have had to change because of the um, dynamics of the pandemic. Um, and many businesses, the approaches of serving customers and working with suppliers and even collaborating have been really uh, reformed and really been totally disrupted. We've had to look at the increase of decision making while improving productivity, using technology in a different way. And your entrepreneurial organizations have been, um, have had to deal with this. So Yuki, um, let's really start with you. You, we've got a whole um, half a lifetime of experience of dealing with IT solutions. Um, how is this time different and maybe you could tell us a bit about you know how your uh, how your company is dealing with the challenges of covid in relationship to you as an entrepreneur okay hey, um for us it wasn't that a huge difference internally because we used to work with um foreign developers and even for japanese developers we work with suburbs, so it's like we were all like remote. Everybody was working from home since before internet was there, like 33 years. Ago. We started the company 33 years ago, and everybody was working from home because developers don't really like to communicate with people, right? <laughs> they like <laughs> computers more. <laughs> and um, 
So it wasn't a huge difference for us for working style. Um, but the good thing was actually um, currently we're working for home health care agencies. Our clients are home health care agencies. They send nurses, doctors, caregivers to elderly people's homes. And they send like three to five places every day. And we provide automatic visiting schedule. We optimize their um, visiting schedules. And what happened was when we do um, sales, we have to go to their office and do sales because most of the people were really, um, they're still analog. And in Japan, we're not that much digitalized, especially in this home health care agency industry. And what happened was in this one year, everybody has changed. They couldn't accept people coming into the office because they were afraid um, because they were meeting elderly people every day, right? And they couldn't mm. bring um, anything back to them because they're weaker. And that's why um, in one year, they changed and they are now very used to using Zoom. And that is a huge difference. We weren't able to do that last year, but now mm -hmm. we can put many meetings after meetings. So it's much, much more efficient. The thing is that how we feel is that it's not the entrepreneur side that has changed. It was actually the market that has changed. That's how I feel. Thank you very <laughs> much okay indeed, you <laughs> Uh -huh. That's a great intro, and I think, um, Joseph, you can perhaps expand on that, drawing on your experience as the CEO of Winos. Um, you're a biotech company really dedicated to providing healthcare solutions, and uh, I'm sure the whole dynamics of COVID has had quite an impact on you, and particularly how you actually innovate and how you deal with entrepreneurship uh, and how you move around. Would you like to comment on that? Sure. Uh, what we do is that making, uh, I mean, portable medical devices from blood collection to, uh, detection, especially, I mean, uh, the virus of COVID-19. And so it's really, I mean, in a sense, it's not good for the world, but in a sense, it's a good opportunity for us. And so, I mean, it's a good opportunity from the business side for us. And I agree with the lady from Japan. I mean, actually, I mean, the pandemic really make us, I mean, in the sales part to be much more uh, sufficient and efficient. And especially you save a lot of time traveling and a lot of cost. So you, you can really focus on, I mean, uh, having meetings by meetings. And it's a good aspect. But the other aspect is that because it's a pandemic, so many places actually lock down. And especially for many, I mean, medical device distributors, they are hardly, uh, I mean, allowed to visit I mean, uh, like hospitals, their customers, and so on and so forth. So as a result, I mean, many, I mean, uh, inquiries, but the, I mean, orders, real orders are not significantly, uh, I mean, increased. And so I do agree it's not about the entrepreneurial side. It's about the whole market. But, uh, like small, uh, startups, how we face this, uh, opportunity as well as the challenge is really something, uh, important and critical for the CEOs of the startups. Thank you very much indeed, Joseph. And, uh, you know, that's an important comment and reflection, uh, from your company from Taiwan. Um, moving over to San Francisco, Angela. Um, you're the president of Tempo Bioscience, mm -hmm. uh, and you know you've been uh, involved, of course, for many years in, in this um, biotechnology sector, uh, biosciences. Um, 
how do you see the whole kind of question of collaborating? You know, we talked about how the market has really forced us to change. How do you see that sort of um, challenge of collaborating and partnering um, within this virtual world? Is that has that been a challenge to you? And, and how you, how do, have you dealt with that? Yes. Um, hi. Thank you for the question. Um, we have been. So in the biotech industry, we typically have been working under city or state um, exemptions under COVID lockdowns. So in a way, our work is changed only because we need to follow public health orders at work for things like masks, wearing masks, social distance. Um, but in terms of collaboration, I think we moved almost entirely um, virtually uh, to collaborate with either partners or clients or um, future uh, manufacturing collaborators. So we move mm -hmm. all of those conversations via Zoom or via Google Meet or sometimes over the phone because uh, internet sometimes has connection issues. So we move to the old fashioned phone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so I think in a way the work is different because of how we perform in the lab and in facilities and everything because things does seem like it's changing, but we do go to work physically, so uh, we're not stuck at home doing research mm -hmm. and development because I think most um, people would understand that we require a laboratory setting. So... Um, yeah, so I think there's change um, in terms of collaboration and it's very different is because normally we meet people in person or at conferences in person and now we yeah. move everything like virtually. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think um, the difference that I have personally noticed is that conversations we can get through the to-do lists and the uh, agenda items quite well, but we don't really know people as humans as well. So I think that is the change, and that's something that mm -hmm. um, computers can't quite deliver, <laughs> if you will. Um, for example, I would love to meet the three of you in person, and I'm sure we'll have great conversation just interacting as humans. That element yeah. is missing when we go online and mm -hmm. um, just chat, you know, with with the camera. And I think it's partly it's because you can't see someone's hands and then their body language, you know, beneath a certain angle of the camera that that's on their computer. So there's some challenges to know someone. Um, virtually, I guess. And sometimes you see a whole team and the team is, each person is in their own office or their own room. And then you don't quite see the team dynamic anymore because it's virtual and everyone's separated into their own space. So I think we get things done and topics are discussed and projects move forward and those are okay. It's just that we don't really know the people as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think Thank people you, are not as humorous. <laughs> For example, people <laughs> are not as humorous virtually. It's really hard to tell jokes when others are not around physically. <laughs> 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 it's quite interesting, Indeed. something I've noticed. <laughs> So um, thank you for that comment. I said a formal part like this kind of platform is quite effective and efficient for getting through things on an agenda. But maybe in terms of the social part where we need those sort of soft skills that, uh, you know, the small talk, can we really do small talk on platforms like this? Maybe not. Um, and, and one thing that, uh, you know, maybe we could sort of develop this and now you're all sort of, um, we could consider you all as relatively um, not young, but um, mature startups. Uh, one thing that startups need, and, and they need to sort of, um, you know, um, attract is funding. And, and maybe that is also a challenge in this type of environment, you know, the whole sort of funding, the VC part. And I think, um, Joseph, Joseph we, we talked about this uh, when we first met virtually as well a couple of weeks yeah. ago. How do you see that sort of funding challenge then? 
you know, considering now the virtual uh, situation that we're in, is that something that's a, a big challenge for, for companies like yours? Uh, uh, indeed. Actually, uh, I think it's a challenge for many of companies, not just, I mean, startups. And uh, the start of Windows was in Israel. And so from the very beginning until today, we actually received, I mean, quite a few, I mean, funds, investments globally. So although, I mean, now due to the pandemic, I mean, travel is not so convenient or limited. So still, I mean, because our funding sources are from many different parts. So for example, I mean, for for example, like uh, some of money at the moment uh, from a certain area could be harder, but could be easier from another part. And so from my point of view, especially for now, I mean, uh, multiple streams of bondings and uh, sources of investments should be very important to keep the company moving forward, especially like, uh, I mean, biotech startup. A lot of resources required to make it, I mean, uh, prof- profitable and scalable. And so this is our strategy. And uh, raise funds globally and many sources. And so that we won't be, I mean, hindered uh, by the funding yeah, so that's one key point of hindrance that we're dealing with on this topic, you know, funding uh, and some of those challenges that you've highlighted there. Uh, but it's important to keep going. Um, and yeah. Yuki, you, you, you know, in Japan, uh, you've had a lot of experience of, um, you know, the whole sort of history of, uh, you have mentioned, I think, when we first met, that you were also, you know, communicating through Skype maybe 20 years ago and now it's Zoom. Um, but what about some of those challenges that Yos has men- mentioned, like funding? Is that something that you can still uh, deal with in, in this type of virtual environment? I mean, we, we any comments I, there? I, I think it's a little bit different between the stages of the um, startup. We are also raising funds at the moment. And this product is like very early. So we are like um, pre-series A kind of thing and I figured out that probably if you're after series A or B then everything is only numbers it will everything will be proved by numbers so they don't really need to meet um, personally but um, if you're before series A if you are really early like C pre C pre series A then it's much more that it seems like if I met somebody not online, they tend to invest more comparing to offline tends to invest yeah. more than comparing yeah. to yeah. online species. Yeah. That's how I feel like. Thank you, Yuki. Angela, um, how is it there in San Francisco in your context? Is that still um, ongoing with um, the virtual environment or, or is how, how have you dealt with that yeah um we are well in biotech we are experiencing a surge in interest from institutional as well as um investors like family office um so it's kind of good news to the biotech industry because everyone realized that um, to make new vaccines, you need to invest in biotech research and development um, so that we can quickly get to vaccines or medicines in general. And also COVID brought to um, a lot of investors the importance of doing researching and working on new medicine. So I think this has sort of helped us in a sense to be more visible um we are raising funds for presto therapeutics which is 
working on basically um, novel IPSC based medicines. Um, so mm -hmm. I think with established investors um, or funds, um, meeting them virtually is not an issue. Um, so I think it's the question if you know them well enough, then being virtual and um, communicating with them um, without meeting them in person is not a problem. But uh, if you don't know the investors very well um, previously before the shutdown, um, I think yeah. sometimes it's it's hard to engage um, on a personal level. Um, I think we we talked about this um, previously. It's that something mm. is humanistic and something is missing virtually that that cannot be delivered through a computer screen. So, <laughs> um, so I think there is that challenge when you are trying to engage investors that you have not met before. Um, mm. It would be better if if investors you know introduce you, but it's still. It just is different from a human perspective. Um, yeah. Thank you, Angela. Yuki, you're smiling and laughing. Is that is that a sign that you fully agree, or do you see any yes, special I totally situations agree. in Japan? Yeah. Yeah, and especially like we were, you were talking about the Skype twenty years ago. Um, I agree. What's online is um, development. There's no problem doing any program development. So um, everything online is enough. So we can do it remotely. There's no problem doing the job, job, job done or like um, teaching our customers, like onboarding how to use our system. That is online. No problem at all. Doing demo, that's not a problem at all. But recently what we found out, what was really funny recently was that um, this year we hired some people and we are meeting like we have zoom meeting all the time so we thought we all knew each other very very well and we felt like we, we never thought that we never met them before but sometimes we, we realize on on the first day when we meet each other it's like he's so smaller than we thought or he's so huge that, that happened at our office yesterday too and this guy came in to the um uh, to one of uh, our colleagues place and everybody was so they took a picture and sent to everybody we already met the other person but this new person was always on the screen and we never imagined that he was so huge it happens a lot those kind of like um, difference discrepancy is is really funny like much smaller and much bigger <laughs> fantastic yeah i think uh, because it's been going for such a long time we've uh, got used to hiring people and maybe only meeting them on zoom and virtually and uh, they do tend to be quite a surprise when we do meet people in reality uh yosis um what about there in taiwan i'm, I'm we, we've sort of been talking about the present and the past and you know i just sort of think it's worthwhile looking to the future maybe before we move on to the future um you know you you could argue that you've all the companies you're involved in uh, have been mature startups what about advice for um entrepreneurs and startups that are maybe at the early stages um any kind of tips here joseph Do you, would you kind of um we heard that you know often if you've got contacts you're well established you can you know do things virtually but if you're starting up any advice there for entrepreneurs and startups that are maybe not so mature and established as yourself or yourselves yeah uh during pandemic for early entrepreneurs i do think communications is one of the key things they have to keep and uh, i mean it's so important because now i mean travel around could be not so uh convenient especially for some of the uh, areas to be locked down and but still i mean communications are still 
are necessary to make the team to be, uh, I mean, so, I mean, connected to each other. So, like, I mean, one of the ladies mentioned that, uh, I mean, uh, talk a joke and so on and so forth. Those human touch, I mean, still necessary. And I would say, especially uh, internally uh, with your team, I mean, communication is yeah. important. And also to your investors, I mean, trust so important. But now, I mean, social distancing, and you can see each other mostly virtually. I mean, this kind of distance make people to be more, I mean, sometimes to the relationship to be more distant. So how to make it close rather than distant will be very important. So one of the very first things, as I mentioned, communication. Always communicate with your team, with your partners, and also your investors. Show your face to them. They were so happy, so happy to see your face. Yeah. That's re excellent, solid advice there. And I, I think it's really important that we do mention teamwork. And, and thank you for bringing that in. You know, the, the fact that we really need to com communicate richly with our teams. Um, and yeah. I'm sure that you've got teams working in all of your organizations. So thank you for bringing that in. Angela, um, you know, in terms of teamwork and, and working in teams, how do you see that in your organization? Is that something that you've been able to deal with um, effectively? Is, or, or is that still a huge challenge there with, with COVID? I think we are adapting to the social distancing measures. Um, and I think communicating with everyone and then it's, it's different. Um, I've noticed subtle uh, humanistic changes that you must sort of adapt to if if your teams are all wearing masks um, and sort of sitting apart. Um, so we no longer have group meetings of um, more than three people in a conference room, for example. And that, because it's changed, um, mm. you have different meetings with different smaller groups so that everyone feels safe and apart, uh, safely apart while working. So I think those meetings have, have changed in terms of dynamic. And because everyone wears masks, um, it's, it's, it's also different when you're communicating because they can't see Difference. your face um, as well, because <laughs> more than half of it's probably covered. Um, so, so I think they're, there are adjustments that one must make um, because of the pandemic. And I think it's key to be very flexible and adaptable um, yeah. in general um, for startup of, you know, early stage or mid stage growth, such as we are, or even more mature stage. Um, being flexible is a huge thing. Um, and, and you sort of need everyone on your team to be flexible also. Um, mm -hmm. So that's part of teamwork. Um, yeah, as, as well as, you know, you want to be in a startup that thrives. So adapt. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. So flexibility um, also, you know, clearly uh, in San Francisco, um, that's a, an excellent example. Flexibility for you and the team. Um, and we're going to, I'd like now to maybe think a little bit about the future, how we see things develop in the future. Um, uh, but I'd like to also ask questions to our panelists, um, two CEOs and one president. So if anybody's listening in the discussion here would like to ask any of the, any of the panelists a question, please, um, you can use the chat function to ask it. Um, but now um, we're taking Can everybody else hear? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, we're yeah, good. I can't hear him. <laughs> yeah, we we lost. Oh, so Peter, we lost. We lost him. Okay. <laughs> we can wait. <laughs> no problem. 
<laughs> How was your meeting um, on online? Is, did it change anything? Like for us, I, I thought that the meetings became much more um, better quality than we were meeting offline because if we meet every day, they will just start to chat to you, right? So um, once we're, we don't see each other, we have a periodic meeting and the meeting quality became much better. That's how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes for us, uh, for example, sometimes I work from home, and especially some important issues I have to deal with, I work from home. So I meet with my colleagues remotely, and so efficient. Yes. <laughs> I like to see them for sure. But sometimes uh, for me to, uh, I mean, uh, to make the progress to be much more efficient, I choose to meet them, I mean, from home, we virtually. Yeah, but I still, I mean, like in Taiwan, uh, the, uh, I mean, everything running as usual, even during the pandemic. So we still can see each other, meet together in a very big group. But still, sometimes I do appreciate virtual meetings really save time and mm -hmm. make the meetings to be much more sufficient and efficient. Yeah. yeah. My apologies, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you are back. Please carry on, yeah. Please carry on. I was asking um, how the meetings, did any of the meetings quality change after um, you becoming online? <laughs> because Excellent. ours Ours were much more better quality because it's not a chat anymore. Like if you're seeing physically, they would just say something to you and say, I told you before. But if you have a periodic meeting, everything is on agenda, recorded, and it's much more better quality. I, I would like to ask from Angela too, how was your meeting? Oh, I, I thank you. Yeah, um, I think we are... Just like you said, the agenda items run well. I think we get accomplished, basically, um, whatever we set forward uh, for the agenda of the meeting. Um, yeah, and then they usually, um, I think we try to um, help everyone adjust to the mm -hmm. fact that it is virtual when if it weren't for COVID-19, we would all have this in person or, um, yeah, I think it's, it's different for humanistic reasons. The work gets done just fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's my two cents. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do, do anybody of, any one of you meet physically sometimes? Like for us, we try to, plan once a month, uh, non, not really like a job meeting, but more like brainstorming kind of meeting. And we meet physically like once a month. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We meet um, in person also because uh -huh. we're not uh -huh. in a complete physical lockdown. So I do see everyone at the facility. I just have to social distance. Um, right. And then if we are in a group, we usually in a conference room that would normally seat, you know, 10 people or something mm -hmm. around that, um, we seat only three. So, mm -hmm. you know, at most I would, <laughs> I would have two other people in the same room. Yeah. Um, it's, it's weird when everyone is sitting so far apart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could just have a, a brief mention about the future. That was the question I was going to ask mm -hmm. before I was okay. cut off. And, and you know, um, it's fascinating to hear how everybody's dealing with those um, ch challenges and barriers and how well you've adapted. But what about the future? How do you see things post-COVID? Do you think we'll return to the old situation or do you think we'll have a sort of a, a new normal? How do you see that? Um, maybe Joseph, first of all. Yeah. I mean, this pandemic does change a lot of things. Um, 
for small and mi uh, I mean medium and small size companies like ours, I mean how to sustain our I mean uh, our business as well as I mean to uh, expand globally. I mean it's really a challenge, specifically uh, financially how to sustain I mean uh, cash flow is one of the key things we are doing. I mean, as I uh, shared earlier, I mean, in the meeting, I uh, shared that uh, pandemic does, I mean, make many places to be locked down. And so as a result, although our technology, especially our products, wine is for, I mean, blood collection, the blood can be used for the uh, tests for COVID-19 and the other part, uh, a lot, another part that we have, Eggy is for detecting of COVID-19, the virus. Although th these two, I mean, products are really engaged, I mean, to the current need, but I mean, lockdown does limit and actually hinder many, I mean, possible, I mean, deals or orders. And from my point of view as a scientist as well, I do think even the, I mean, vaccine, I mean, can be distributed to everyone, anywhere. I mean, in the coming three years, I mean, because the virus itself is RNA virus. So mutation is one of the things happened to RNA virus. So I do see in brief, I mean, this kind of situation will be a new norm. And so if it's a new norm, so how your business can keep itself sustained from the cash flow point of view, in a sense, I mean, keep yourself survival but still, I mean, uh, move forward and expand globally. I do think uh, the government, I mean, governments, I mean, uh, their supports will be so crucial. I mean, how to, I mean, encourage exports, I mean, and as well as to uh, provide sufficient supports to, for the, I mean, uh, I mean, the operation and so on and so forth, it will be the key. So, yeah, stay, survive, and uh, hope for the best. Excellent. Thank you very much, Joseph, about um, that look into the future and how your organization is doing, dealing with it so effectively and, and ready to, to move forward. Um, yeah. That was also very important. Also, you brought in the question of what policymakers can do, maybe governments. But um, let's move to Japan. Yuki, how do you see the future for you? I think you've been well known in Japan as being involved in a lot of disruption um, in your history. Um, how do you see the future now? Do you think it would totally disrupt the situation, uh, how we do business in Japan, or how do you see that? Um, we're on a topic of cross boundary today, so I would like to talk about that from that perspective. Um, as we talked before, uh, at the meeting, um, I've been using Skype since 1998, maybe? No, 2000, but in 1998, I was already working with people in New York and Arizona and European countries and we were all in one project team for a development and they were developing something for us and um, we could share something like we were working on one thing and then um, the next person in the next time zone will take over and do the rest of them and then the next like Europe and then New York and then back to Japan and something like that. And it was really, really fun. So working together is not a problem, really. It, it has been done like 20 years ago. It was already there. Um, the challenge is for me is if 
I want to go globally, like if I want to expand my business in US, I was, I would like to try to, um, work remotely. And I was always thinking that I had to go to Silicon Valley and talk to the people over there, but I would like to challenge and see if I can really expand the business in US still staying in Japan. I would like to try that one. <laughs> well, that's a fascinating point and a you know, real situation, which is a, the real thrust of our topic. You know, How can you expand, develop without actually going there physically? Is that, yes. is that a reality? Yeah. Do you think, I, I um, think I think it's possible. I haven't done that yet, but in, in probably in 2022, I would like to try that thing, and I would like to find someone who can do business together, and I would like to also try um, testing with real customers and see how it goes. I mean, I think it's possible. I think I think because everybody's now used to Zoom, I think it's not that difficult fascinating that is a good topic to move forward with um and maybe angela you know the states so you're in the states then san francisco late in the evening and thank you very much for being with us so do oh, you think that's you. a reality do you think that's going to be a reality then exactly what yuki said that we can really expand beyond bound boundaries over borders without physically going to the uh, countries i think so i'm optimistic. Uh, we have done many new projects and collaborations during the shutdown since April. So I'm very optimistic for for uh, Yuki's company. Um, you, sh you should be able to uh, navigate virtually and expand. Um, and um, especially if your business model is geared towards B2B, um, mm -hmm. I believe virtual is fine. Um, mm -hmm to explain product and uh, basically technically explain the features. Mm -hmm. um, and I think many people are getting used to B2B offerings that are basically through the phone or other um, devices. Um, yeah, I think it's just a question of technical marketing in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. between, your, between yourself and your clients, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Thank possible. you for that confirmation. That's very encouraging, Angela. Uh, Yosis, final, uh, we've got think, a couple of minutes left. Uh, Yosis, a final comment in that direction, expanding globally without having to visit the country using a virtual uh, context. How do you see that? Yeah, that's what we, we do. Uh, we have the headquarter in Taiwan and one branch in Israel. And in the coming years, we are going to set up another one in the U.S. But I'm not sure whether, I mean, the money from Silicon Valley will support this kind of structure. Because, I mean, uh, investors like to see you on the ground. I mean, be because it's all about trust. And so, I mean, but now the situation to be so different, so could be, I mean, possible. Thank you. So excellent commentaries from our three expert panelists from Japan, from Taiwan and from San Francisco, USA. I'd like to thank them all. We really um, focused expertly on that topic of expanding across borders without face to face communication. I think our experts agree that it's p perfectly possible um, having the right connections, dealing with the technologies effectively, of which they're all doing extremely well with their companies. So the future looks particularly bright. And thank you, Yuki, for commenting and Angela for commenting that the, the adaption will be uh, not the same as it was two years ago, but it will be a new norm that synthesizes those, bo those, those two contexts, making use of the face-to-face -face and the virtual. So thank you very much to our experts. Thank you also from Switzerland, from our university here in Switzerland. Wishing everybody um, a wonderful conference for the rest of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a great uh, time. Thank I think you. we're going to take a picture now. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I have to press. Uh, let me just quickly see. Um, You're not in you? it. <laughs> Sorry? You're not in it. Where are you? Yeah.
Can I see you? You can't see me. We cannot uh, see you. I cannot. Ah, uh, maybe can somebody else take the picture then? I can't uh, see. Uh, do it. One, two, three. One more. One, two, Cheers. three. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you. Have a great day, thank and you. Um, wherever you are, a good sleep, Angela. Oh, and thank you. a good you. rest of the day, Yuki. Mm -hmm. And thank you very thank much you indeed, Yosef.